Come on, Bill. It's all downhill from here. <laughs> <laughs> What did we run into? It looks like an apple. It is an apple. They're as big as hippos. Hmm. Something's been eating this one. What do you make of this? Rupert! Did you hear something? Yes. I think someone called my name. Look! It, it's wearing shoes. What if these aren't apples, Rupert? What if they're creatures from another planet? <laughs> I doubt creatures from another world would wear patterned socks. And how would they know my name? Bill! These look like the Professor's spectacles. You don't suppose... I mean, do you think... Get this thing off me! Don't worry, Professor. We'll save you. Uh, it's moving! Just a bit more! Uh, Whoa! I say, it feels quite literally like the weight of the world's been lifted off my shoulders. Are you all right? Well, I must say, I certainly wasn't until you two lads saved the day. I calculate it would have taken 63 days to have eaten enough of that apple to push it off. So what happened, Professor? <laughs> oh, yes. Well, boys, as you might imagine, it's a long story. We'll get straight to the good part. I was taking various measurements between infusions of my new growth formula when a slight breeze produced this rather untimely windfall. Growth formula? Right you are, Rupert. I believe I can say with confidence that my new growth formula will revolutionize farming the world over. Judging from the fruits of my labor, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> Would you boys care for one? An apple a day keeps the doctor away, as the saying goes. Unless one this size falls on you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, quite right, Bill. Quite right. I'd love to see a pie made from one. Then why don't you take this home to your mother, Rupert? Thanks, Professor. Mum will be amazed when she sees this. <laughs> and I dare say she'll have quite a time peeling it. Pie or no pie, I don't think I can take another step. We can't stop now, Bill. We're almost there. <laughs> That's a great-looking horse, Dad. Eh? Uh, well, thank you, son. <laughs> it's, um, supposed to be a camel. Oh, yes, I see it now. Brilliant camel, isn't it, Bill? I thought camels had two humps. Can we help? Oh, of course you can. Why don't you boys start raking up these clippings? Just put them in a pile over there and I'll pick them up later. No, Dad. We mean, can we help you sculpt an animal? I want to do an enormous whale with its mouth wide open so you can walk inside. Now, now, boys. Topiary is an exacting and delicate art. You don't just hack away at random hoping an animal emerges. You study the inner structure of the plant and plan your piece carefully. Now then, I promised your mother I'd fix up that rickety shelf in the kitchen. You boys finish tidying up, and when I come back, perhaps I can start you off on something simple. It can't be that difficult. Done! Oh, no! You've ruined it! What do you mean? Camels are supposed to have two humps. Not all camels. Some have one. Are you sure? Yes. That was supposed to be a one-humped camel. Don't panic, Rupert. I can fix it. He doesn't look anything like a camel now. What about a horse? It might be a horse with a bad back. Right. If it's a horse we're after, we won't be needing this anymore. Wait, Bill. We still need a head. We could have used that. Oh, um, yes. Well, I gave it some thought, and I think a dog might suit this shape a bit better. There we go. That ought to do it. A dog. Well, obviously it's a crossbreed. 
Bill, this was one of my dad's favourite shrubs. Just in case you hadn't noticed, Rupert, every attempt I've made has been an improvement on the last. I'm on the right track now. Just give me one more chance. <sighs> All right, Bill. But it really is your last chance. Perhaps your father was right about studying the inner structure of the plant. I hope you know what you're doing this time. I have a vision, Rupert. That's what I'm afraid of. Ta-da! Well, what do you think? It looks like an anvil. Eureka! That's just what I'd planned. We can't leave it like this. It should at least look like an animal of some sort. Not bad, Rupert. A hedgehog. Thanks, Bill. It's a long way from a camel, isn't it? Yes, and Dad was very proud of that camel. Oh, if only this shrub would grow as fast as it shrank. That's it, Bill. We can use some of the Professor's new growth formula to put this shrub to rights again. We'll have it back to camel size in no time. What are we waiting for? Let's go and see the Professor. Hello, Professor. Boys, back so soon? Here, have a cherry. Whoa! Oh! Professor, we're here to ask you for a small favour. We're in a bit of a jam. Rupert here was bent on creating a hedgehog out of his father's favourite shrub and... To make a long story short, Professor, we'd like to use some of your special growth formula on one of my dad's favourite shrubs. I'd be glad to give you some. I'm interested in testing my formula on a wide variety of applications. It's so pleasing to see you boys taking an interest in gardening. It's a very rewarding pastime. It's very potent, and you need use only a few drops. Thank, Thank you, you, Professor! Let me know the results. And remember, boys, just a few drops! I hope this works. It's a good thing we don't have to drink it. It smells terrible. One, two, three, and one more for good luck. Nothing's happening. Let's give it a little time. Perhaps it hasn't reached the roots yet. Bill! The professor said just a few drops. I thought since we're in a hurry, an extra helping might be in order. Rupert, it moved! <gasps> it's growing! That worked amazingly well. All right, Bill. This time, I'll do the clipping. <laughs> I don't believe it! It's a frisky little creature. I hope it doesn't mind when we plant it back over here. All right, Bill. On the count of three, we grab him. One, two... <laughs> I wasn't kidding when he said it was a very potent formula. <laughs> it's a good thing I didn't sculpt a tiger. This might be useful. On guard, you fiendish hedgehog! It's roundup time. Let's lasso him, then hog time, then clip the varmint down to size. You said it, Bill. He'll think twice before he rolls over us again. Bill, look! He's got quite an appetite. Rupert, our hedgehog's vegetarian. I don't want to become his next nutritious snack. I'm not sure, Bill, but that shru... That hedgehog is our responsibility. We've got to... What was that? It sounded like a giant hedgehog destroying Mr. Trunk's gate. Come on, Bill. We'll sneak up on it. Oh, no! Well, now we know he's not strictly a vegetarian. Yes, ma'am. A hedgehog, you say? Well, I'll certainly look into it. What? He ate your... My word, a hedgehog? Uh, hello? Yes, sir. Well, you see, the phones have been so busy, I haven't had a chance. All this fuss over a hedgehog. I'd better get to the bottom of this. He'll be full up soon. He's eaten everything in sight. As soon as he has his afternoon nap, we'll nab him. Hello, Rupert. Bill? Constable Growler, 
doing a little gardening, are we? Yes, you might say that. My phone has been ringing off the hook with complaints about a pesky hedgehog. You boys haven't crossed paths with one, have you? As a matter of fact, we've been having a great deal of trouble with that one over there. Hmm. I'm having difficulty spotting it, Rupert. He's right behind you, Constable Growler. All right, you little nipper. I... My word! <laughs> Something tells me you boys have some explaining to do. You see, Constable Growler, Bill and I were doing some gardening for Dad Rupert and... Rupert tacked his father's favourite shrub into a hedgehog Perhaps and... Perhaps you'd better get straight to the part explaining why that monster is roaming the countryside. We use too much of the Professor's growth formula. It's very potent. I think you lads had better accompany me to the Professor's. Hopefully he'll have some kind of an antidote on hand. Good afternoon, Professor. I say, what a pleasant surprise. I'm afraid this isn't a social call, Professor. It seems Rupert and Bill have got a little carried away with this growth formula of yours. We're here to get the antidote. <laughs> antidote? Why in the world would you ever need an antidote? I say, did anyone else hear thunder just now? That's the reason we need an antidote! Here we go again! My word! Great Scott! By the looks of things, we're going to need a jug of antidote. I'm afraid I haven't got one. A jug? No, an antidote. The situation has become far too dangerous, Rupert. You and Bill had better go on home now. The Professor and I will handle things at this end. Dear me, this is a challenge. Drive round to the workshop and I'll see what I can come up with. That's everything. Full steam ahead! Straight home! adventures we've had, Bill, this tops them all. It's not all your fault, Rupert. The Professor really should have invented an anti-growth formula, too. Anti-growth? That's it, Bill. Right, I'm sure the corner shop will have some right beside the pixie dust. We can get it from the Autumn Elves. They must have something to stop things from growing in the winter. But, Rupert, where will we find an Autumn Elf in the middle of summer? Are you ready, Professor? Primed and loaded, Constable Growler. Now all that remains is to... Oh, there she blows! Hedgehog off the starboard bow! <laughs> now we've got him! Hang on, Professor! Whoa! There's a hollow tree we have to find. It's here somewhere. There are thousands of trees here, Rupert. Don't just stand there, Bill. Start knocking. Steady as she goes. We're almost within range. Rupert, this is a hopeless waste of time. Come on, Bill, we're doing well. I'll bet we've done a hundred trees. One hundred and one! Bill, you found it! Don't you think we should wait for someone to invite us in? We can't do that, Bill, or we'll be waiting until September. Everyone's asleep down here. If he's been sleeping for six months, I'm not waking him. I hate to disturb him, but we desperately need that potion. Good morning! It's time to get up! It's afternoon, Rupert. He's a very sound sleeper. I'll try my dad's technique. Crocodile-doo! Rise and shine! Step aside, Rupert. I'll try my dad's technique. Come on, you lazy badger. Get out of bed. You're going to be late for school. Bill, what if we turn that clock ahead to September? It's worth a try. 
Are you ready? Here goes. <laughs> what? Autumn already? It seems like I only barely nodded off. Where does the time go? This isn't September. <laughs> uh, smells more like June. I'm terribly sorry, but it is June. Rupert, uh, what are you doing here? We've come to ask if you have any anti-growth potion, or even something that shrinks plants. Well, yes, that would be our perennial flowering vines potion. But why would anyone need it at this time of year? It's a long story, but we wouldn't have woken you three months early if it wasn't an emergency. Well, here, Rupert, just spray some of this on top of whatever plant you want to stop growing. I'm going back to bed. Thank you so much! Let's go, Bill! Make sure that bottle gets back here before September. But don't wake me up. Well, June, what a horrible time of year. Steady now, steady! Fire! Aha! Bullseye! Good show, Professor! Yeah! Whoa! This ought to tire him out! I hope we can find them. This potion on top of that hedgehog is going to be more difficult than I thought. You'd almost need to fly over it. That gives me an idea. Follow me, Bill. I'll explain on the way. Phew. He's finally run out of steam. I think he's ready to succumb to a major trimming now. <laughs> yeah! Professor! Oh, my! <sighs> Nice hedgehog. Good boy. <laughs> Try not to make any sudden moves, Professor. To tell the truth, Constable Growler, I'm rather more worried. He'll be the one making a... Oh, no! <gasps> Just a few drops, Rupert. Hop on, Bill. We're ready to go. <laughs> Stop this instant in the name of the law! Uh, Professor, can hedgehogs jump? I'm afraid not. Their stubby little legs aren't designed for activity of that sort. There, there. Easy, big fellow. Let's not try anything rash. I'm glad this beast has some sense. Oh, dear. Perhaps it doesn't. Whoa! Swing around over there, Bill. I think I see something. I'm terribly sorry. It was most irresponsible to concoct a growth formula without allowing for an antidote. Don't be so hard on yourself, Professor. Constable Growler! Professor! Hang on! We're going to rescue you! Steady, Bill! Got him! Oh, my! Sassafras and cinnamon, of course! I'd better get this planted again before Dad finds it missing. Ten minutes ago, I was going to arrest that creature. But he seems harmless enough now. You can take him with you. Thank goodness. On top of making such a mess, I'd hate to tell your father his favourite shrub was in prison. There we go. It looks like it never left the yard. I had no idea gardening could be so hazardous. Rupert, Bill, I'd like to have a word with you. I think it's about to become even more hazardous. 
I tried to stop him, Mr. Bear. It was an excellent camel. I told him over and over, but oh no, he was bound and bent on doing this hedgehog. Bill? Well, I must say, Rupert, I'm rather impressed. This little hedgehog has real character. You've captured an amusing, mischievous pose. You know how hedgehogs are always scurrying about getting into things. Yes, we know. So you're not angry about the camel? I admit I would have preferred giving you some hands-on guidance. But all in all, it's a very good first attempt. You know, it almost has a lifelike quality. Hmm. It looks like something's been at the petunias. <laughs> <laughs>